Hello, and welcome to another Saturday food support group. Um, we have these Zoom meetings every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And um, I just invite people to come and to share their stories because I've had so many people reach out to me um, in private messages and tell me their stories. And uh, I just couldn't keep it for myself. I had to share with you all of the beautiful things that are happening when people break their addiction to sugar and carbs and processed food. Um, and they get their brains back, they get their bodies back, they get their lives back. Um, and they're just so excited that they can't wait to tell. Um, and so I informed everyone that I would be recording these meetings and I encouraged them that if they wanted to remain anonymous that they can turn the camera off um, but a lot of people just, they want to share. They want to share what has happened to them. And they're so excited about their new life. <laughs> um, and then I also open it up for questions. If people are, are still struggling and they're still on this journey, um, that they can come and, and ask questions. But if you need more individualized care than just in a group like this, feel free to email me at innerclaritysystem at gmail.com and I'll walk you through what it looks like to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. All right, thanks. I hope you enjoy the group. Hello, happy Saturday. Um, so glad to get together here with you guys um, and have another conversation about this journey. Um, and I am so honored and so excited to, um, either introduce you to, or, um, have you talk again with, uh, my friend, um, carnivores angel, um, Amy, um, Amy and I have connected through the carnivore community, um, keto community, and um, it has just been a beautiful connection and relationship. And we, uh, she just produced this morning um, our, uh, our interview, our latest interview, our only interview that we've done. <laughs> um, so go on to Carnivore's Angel uh, YouTube and you can watch our, uh, our latest uh, interview. But first, we're going to have Amy share her story. Um, which I just realized I've never interviewed you. Um, I've never, I've never had you share your story on my channel. So I'm really excited for this opportunity. Well, thank you. Em. And it's funny. I don't know that I've ever shared my story on anyone's channel except for mine. Oh my gosh. I feel ever. so honored. So yeah, you're the first. So that is like perfect. Um, Emily, I'm sure y'all know is one of like humanity's favorite people. I'm oh. sorry, but I think everybody absolutely adores Emily and thank you, my darling. I'm so happy to have gotten to know you and I do try to come as much as I can to these meetings and I haven't been making it all the time. So now it's in my phone, the reminder is in there and I will be here a lot more often. Okay. So I can just jump in. If anybody has any comments or questions or anything like that, put it in the chat. I will read it as they pop up. Or if you want to say something, raise your hand and I will stop. And then we can get into any conversation that you want. Totally fine with that. If you hear chickens in the background, it's my fault because <laughs> I have a farm and my chickens are going crazy right now. And the children are downstairs and the ducklings are downstairs and there's it's life. So I get it. Totally get it. To start out, uh, my name is Amy. Hi, everybody. Um, I grew up perfect life ever, like Hallmark movie, perfect childhood. There's a rooster. Um, <laughs> and I, at the age of 13, was put onto birth control pills because my cycle was a disaster. It would go for two weeks. It would stop for three days, start up again for a few days, be done for two months and then start up again. I would have severe migraines. I would throw up and my cramping was so intense that I couldn't go to school. So of course, doctors are like, well, let's put her on birth control pills. Cause obviously her hormones are genetically screwed up. So let's do that. <clears throat> it was on birth control pills until I was 21, 20 or 21. And then I was like, ah, I kind of want a kid. I'm married now. It's been three years. Let's, let's have a kid. Went off the birth control pills, got pregnant. The first one was actually pretty good. Um, I, I handled that pretty well. Then I had a miscarriage 
shortly thereafter, we weren't ready anyways. We like weren't expecting it. Then when I was pregnant, just got excited and then miscarried a month later was pregnant again. And that ended up being a really, really tough postpartum period for me. Um, I remember holding the baby, trying to nurse him and then just pulling him off and throwing him down the bed. And I was like, I, he can't touch me. He can't touch me. I can't, I was not functioning. And my husband was like, what the heck? And I was like, I need to go to the doctor right now. I'm not okay. So I went to the doctor and of course they put me on medications, um, just one to start with. And they said, Oh, it's just postpartum. As soon as your hormones regulate, we'll, we'll get you off of these. And I remember this voice in the back of my head. It's in your genetics. You're never going to get off these. Just like your mom, you can't outrun this. Your mom's on medication and has been almost her whole life. So will you constantly in the back of my head, I knew that that's just the way it was going to be. So skip forward. That was when I was like 23, 24, skip forward and still on medications was on six different antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications, uh, benzodiazepines, all kinds of fantastic, fun, little cocktails and nothing was quite working. And I kept getting worse and worse. We'd have to up my medications. And then we ended up having to switch medications because nothing could continue to work properly. The final straw was just after my youngest was born. And at this point in time, I was already gluten-free because I had already figured out that gluten did bad things to me. It affected my heart. I actually had a heart ablation because it was misfiring and my heart beat would drop down to 36 beats a minute. And then I'd pass out. Oh my goodness. All from gluten, all from gluten. But I knew that if I got gluten, I would have a massive panic attack. So I avoided gluten like the plague. Well, new baby on the way to psychiatrist because it's time for a checkup. Haven't eaten anything because depressed. You don't eat when you're supposed to eat. And we stopped by Arby's on the way. No bun, just the meat. Put it in a container. We drive through the drive through heading to the doctors. I open up the container and you can see the little breadcrumbs on top of the meat. So they put it on the bun, left it there for a decent amount of time, pulled it off the bun and put it in a container. And it was stuck. Completely. It was like melted to it. And I was like, well, I you know, try to pick it off, flick it off. I'm starving. I'm, I'm hangry at this point in time. So I eat the parts that I think are clean. 30 minutes later, I'm sitting in my psychiatrist's office and I began an epic meltdown and I start crying and crying and crying. And she looks at me. She looks at my little baby and the baby carrier looks at my husband who looks exhausted. And she goes, how often does this happen? And we said, only when I get gluten. Well, she's plant-based and doesn't believe in that and says, I'll be right back. Leaves the room, comes back in a few minutes later and says, Amy, I think you could use a break. Well, yeah, what mom couldn't use a break? I mean, she's like, I think maybe you should take a couple of days off. How do you take a couple of days off? The sheriff's deputy will be here in a few minutes to escort you to the ER she called a suicide watch on me. And for three days, I was taken away from my family, including my new baby. Oh my goodness. So I'm in the facility where they're watching me. And by this point in time, uh, like 30 minutes later, I was fine. I was like, I'm good. Because it was a reaction to the gluten. It's out of my system. So I'm talking to the sheriff's deputy and I was like, you know what? Thank you so much for being here. I said, I'm really sorry that this is what you have to do. And I said, uh, you know, uh, it was kind of an unfortunate circumstance, but me getting mad at you isn't going to do any good. So thank you so much for all that you do. He just looked at me. (laughs) I was like, you are crazy. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I'm crazy. It's fine. So I was taken away for three days, avoided gluten, like the plague. I barely ate at that point in time. I was still standard American diet. So I still ate the rice. I ate the eggs. I just avoided anything that I knew to have wheat in it. And I was, well, and I'm sure that they didn't really give you a lot of good gluten-free choices. Yeah. And I, I just, that's why I didn't eat a whole lot. And they thought I was crazy, but I was asked by two patients, do you work here? And I was asked by a nurse, why are you even here? (laughs) Because I got gluten. That's all. And then they looked at me and went, 
Oh, okay. Yes, I know you think I'm crazy. Now I think everyone's figuring it out. How many people are in the psych ward right now? Probably because of gluten. Because of gluten alone. Yes. So I get out and I'm desperate at this point in time to take control of my own health. I used to have nightmares that I would have to take a trip and I would forget my medications. That I would forget to pack them. Hi, Jackie. And I I would panic and I would wake up in a sweat. My heart was racing because I was going to forget my medications because... I cannot function without them. So I decided I got to get happy any way I can get happy. I'm pretty sure if I could lose weight, I would then be happy enough to get off my medications because that's how things work, you know, logically because skinny is skinny equals happy. Exactly. Skinny equals happy. So I'm convinced that if I could just lose weight, I'll do it. So I see keto. I've seen keto. I've been avoiding keto because I think keto is a fad and I'm not going to do it. I finally give in to keto. I lose 75 pounds is a happy side effect. And six months in, I woke up one morning and I could feel my entire brain. It was working for the first time in my adult life. My brain was working and I opened up my eyes and I looked at my husband and I said, I think I can come off of my medications. And he goes, please no. (laughs) And he's like, we've, we've been there. We've done that. And I said, no, there's something different. I can feel it. And he was like, if you really think you can, then let's call your doctor and talk to her. Called the doctor. And she said, that is never going to happen unless you change your diet. Agreed. And she says, you got to go plant-based. And I Uh. said, I said, okay. Um, so what do you suggest I do? So I listened to her spiel, listen in one ear and out the other. And then I said, okay, so if I make those changes, how would I then come off the medications? And she's like, well, you would have to. And then she tells me what I have to do. Cause there is no cold Turkey with these meds. You do not just stop. No, that is a recipe for disaster. Physical brain damage to your body that is in some cases irreversible or lifelong. So don't do that. (laughs) Or suicide. Exactly. So I listened to what she says and I said, thank you so much for letting me know what I need to do for your opinion. I'll let you know how it goes. So I began the slow and arduous process of weaning myself off of those medications. And I got down and off of them. It was so hard. When I was taking those pills, I was literally crying because I knew that I didn't need it. And yet if I didn't take it, I could cause more damage. And I'd gotten myself stuck in this box. And so I I still took my pills. It took me about five months to get off of everything um, because one of my bottles was open and I was trying to cut the teeny tiny pill into quarters. And and then it crumbled. Yep. I dropped the, the pill crusher onto the bottle, which went into the sink, which went down the drain Oh, with my teeny tiny little pills. And I went, well, I guess I'm done with that one. There was like (laughs) 20 pills left, you know, and I'm not twitching too badly to this day. So we're okay. Um, so that was how I got off of all of my medications. I, uh, did it while I was keto. I then had a tragedy in our family, our, and our, uh, family member, our 14 year old niece committed suicide and I had a 14 year old daughter and a whole plethora of other children around that age. There's, I got a lot of kids and that hit me so personally and it scared me. And so I was like, I can't do this again. I I can't let anything take me back down into that hole. Now that I look back, my response was appropriate for the situation. Oh yeah. But I panicked. And so I went super strict all in carnivore to try to take it to the next level of healing. And my method failed me. It's not to say that carnivore failed me, but my method certainly did. I ended up going with only grass fed, grass finished meat and organs, unsalted carry gold butter and absolutely nothing else. And I pulled an Emily and my throat physically refused to let me swallow. After about four and a half months of that, it would close off 
and I couldn't get water down. I couldn't get food down. I couldn't get anything down. So I ended up having to come back off of that. And now I'm 98% meat-based with a little bit of seasoning and a few other things sprinkled in like an avocado once in a while. And um, I'm still finding my healing. I'm still going through my struggle and my journey and I'm bringing everyone along with me um, because sometimes you guys just need to know that you're not alone in what you're going through. And even though we look like we have it all figured out on this side of the camera, we don't. And so uh, we ended up taking my whole family low carb, everyone in our house, my husband included, I was only low carb by myself for 12 hours. And then he figured out how much he was eating. And then he joined me on my, on my journey. Um, we took our kids low carb. One got off of all of her ADHD medications. The other one started, um, finding that he wasn't nearly as aggressive. He wasn't going after his sisters. Uh, we got one off of all of her asthma medications and allergy medications as well. So when my kids are here, uh, blended family, some of them go back and forth. Some of them stay here when they are here, they are low carb, no matter what. And we kind of play around a little bit with, oh, maybe you know, we can see if you can have this. It's been a very trying month. Um, my, my little stepson, unfortunately, we're finding exactly how much he can't handle. I think that he really should be carnivore. Uh, he does best that way. And so we had a run in actually last night. And that was kind of the final straw of, okay, but I'm sorry. No more, of you know, no more apples, no more oranges, no more anything. And so uh, we're still figuring it out with that as well. But I also have carnivore dogs. Um, my, my two German shepherds are raw fed and gorgeous. The vet is very impressed with them. Um, so we, we kind of live it all around. I'm very blessed to be able to have my whole entire family surrounding me that way. Um, I know a lot of people are very alone in that, which is why these kinds of communities are so very important. So that even though they are far away, you don't feel like you are all alone. Absolutely. And, um, you know, talk me through real quick. Um, there, there's, the, there's a question in the um, chat that says, why did all the beef and butter make your throat close. Um, but talk me through also, um, how was your mental health through going so strict carnivore and then getting back to that 98%, like, did that rock your boat mentally? Oh my gosh. So I went super strict all in carnivore, knowing in my heart of hearts, in my soul, down to my toes, that it was going to fix me. It was going to fix me. So it's not, I've had some people say, well, you didn't really believe that's why it didn't work. You know, placebo effect. No, I, I, I haven't known anything as strongly in my entire life as I knew that eating this way was going to heal me. And so I, I stuck with it. I hated the taste of the cow <clears throat> it tasted fishy. I couldn't stand it, but I knew it was going to fix me. So it was okay because all I needed was the fuel, the proper nutrients for my body. And I got to a point where I didn't even want to eat anymore because it made me feel sick. My mental clarity was beginning to dim. Mm. My brain processes were slowing down and I was becoming more depressed which is not supposed to happen. So of course I'm in denial over here and I'm like, that's not the way this works. No, 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 no. Meat heals everything. <laughs> I've got 3000 hours worth of knowledge, training, education in this. This is not the way that it works. And so finally at like four and a half months, my husband comes in and he goes, that's enough. He goes, that is absolutely it. He goes, I am watching you go back down the hole. He goes, you are going the wrong direction. I love you too much to lose you again. And he was like, what sounds good? And I start crying and I'm like, eggs. He goes, go make some eggs right now. Wow. I made the eggs crying, <laughs> standing over my eggs. 
They didn't do it. I failed. Eat the eggs. And I felt my brain wake up again. Wow. And I went, oh, maybe it doesn't work for everybody. Every single time. Come to find out, I have problems. I have issues. I have mental things. I have physical things that I don't know about. And just now finding out, I probably have Lyme disease, a couple of autoimmune conditions that have been pretty well hidden for the past four years because of the way that I've been eating, blessing and a curse. But sometimes those will mess your body up so much that it won't function properly. And so much like Emily, she, her story, she does the same thing. She goes carnivore and a month later, acute dysphagia, no more swallowing in the hospital, activates MS symptoms, all of these issues, because sometimes our bodies are, I'm sorry to say broken. And I don't think that that is a a bad thing. I don't think it's a negative thing. Type one diabetics, their pancreas is broken. It doesn't mean that they are less of a person because part of their body isn't functioning properly. For some of us, we don't know what's not working properly. With type one diabetics, you know, you know exactly what's not working and you figure out how to fix it. Well, sometimes like me, you don't know what's wrong. So all you have is trial and error because Western medicine has completely failed us and they do not have the tests to figure out on that level what is wrong. Well, will you have fibromyalgia? Well, you have depression. It's in your genetics. That is the way that they see us. And so my answer to why did beef and butter do that to my throat? I have no idea because I was completely convinced that it was my saving grace. And I was ready to not eat a single other thing in the history of mankind, except for beef and butter. And my body said no. So then the mental trauma that came from that feeling like a failure because my body didn't do what it was supposed to do. I had to deal with that as well. So finding my way back to keto sauces, spices, um, and avocados, I couldn't have for a long time because they were really messing with, I don't know what my heart, they give me the really bad heart palpitations. So electrolyte imbalances y'all kind of a disaster but I'm figuring it out one disaster at a time. So that, that is my answer to that. I really don't know. And if I could figure that out, I think I would probably be a billionaire because then I could come up with the perfect ratio for everybody of your macro macros, your fat to your protein, to your electrolytes, to if any carbs at all, what's going to heal you. Cause obviously my body, it doesn't like that. And after four and a half months, I gave in. Yeah. And well, I think that's why it's so important for us to have this conversation publicly because it is absolutely reckless to sit here and be in the carnivore community and say, meat heals everything. And um, to say that even that keto heals everything, I think it depends I think it depends because there are so many different factors. We have no clue what we are healing from. Doctors have no clue what we are healing from. Even when you take all the tests and you get all of the results, we have no clue what is going on inside of our bodies. It is so intricate and so complicated. And there are so many variables, be it environmental, be it um, trauma. If you had childhood trauma, if you had relational trauma, um, be it that it's the source of your meat, the source of your food, um, there is so much. So we have to tread lightly when we suggest these things and we have to have this community, have these conversations and you, you really need to have somebody else who knows your name, who can say, Amy, what are your symptoms? Amy, how are you feeling today? What's going on with you today? Um, It's not a cookie cutter thing. And it drives me nuts when people 
want to sign up to work with me and they're like, okay, give me a meal plan. And I'm like, no, that's reckless. That's absolutely reckless for me to tell you what to eat. It's just like, what supplements are you taking? What should I be taking? Your supplements are not my supplements. Um, and speaking of supplements, I'm going to jump over to medications. Go. Fun fact. Did you know that Accutane, the medication that you take for really bad acne, yeah. has now come out and admitted that it alters your DNA indefinitely? <sighs> So I took that for over a year. Maybe that's why I can't handle beef only. I mean, literally it could be a a sickness, an illness that I had and the antibiotics that I took and they killed off one of my microbiome that never came back again. It could be an injury. I scratched my knee on a rusty slide. It could be the asbestos in my old school building. Mold. Exactly. It could be so many things and there is no one size fits all. There is no easy answer for some people. They are able to do that. And I am so happy for those people. If you can just eat meat and get better, count your lucky stars. You are blessed because there's some of us who are very jealous of that. (laughs) I am currently going backwards. I am, haven't changed a thing going up in weight very, very slowly. No idea why everything is beginning to hurt. It's just getting worse and worse and worse. Um, the meetup is in Chicago land on the fourth and I'm going, yes, there's Jackie <laughs> and so excited. my husband and I were talking about, I was like, I don't know, babe, I'm really scared to travel again. The last time I traveled, like it triggered everything. And he looked at me and he's like, you're driving this time. He's like, you're going to be with a friend and I think you need to go still. He's like, you still need to go and be around these other people and find your people. That is my biggest thing in this world is finding your people and a support group, people who know your name and who you begin to trust enough to share your struggles with because it's scary. You don't want to tell people because you think that they're going to judge you. And I understand that it took me a long time to be willing to say, I can't just eat meat and get better. I mean, a long time before I openly admitted that. So finding your people who won't judge you and who will see you for who you are and love you for who you are flaws and all is honestly one of the best ways to get through this crazy journey called life. Absolutely. Um, And there's a question here in the chat that says, how does your carnivore diet look like now? So now like this minute, (laughs) because it changes every day. It's ridiculous, but it's okay. Cause we're on this process. So funny y'all. Okay. So I did an interview with Dr. Annette Bosworth. If you don't know who she is, go to the YouTube channel and find it. They have her books right here. They just got delivered today. So yeah. she has a YouTube channel, Dr. Boz. Um, she has her own website, which is bozmd.com. She works with the sickest of the sick patients in this like world. Cancer. They have, yes. They have, they have cancer. They have Alzheimer's. They have um, sclerosis, brain injuries, MS. I mean like the sickest of the sick patients, she works with them and she uses a ketogenic diet to do it. She chases the numbers. You know, we always say, don't chase your numbers for most people. I think that that's still very good advice because you get a little psychotic if you do, but for the sick people come to find out chasing those numbers is actually a really good thing. So right now I am in the process of getting my ketones way up and getting my blood sugar way down. And so it is altering and it is changing. Yesterday, I had one cup of coffee and in my coffee, it has a whole egg, a giant chunk of butter and MCT oil and collagen. So this is fat and protein in my coffee. I 
then had about eight ounces of pork belly with some red, Redmond real salt seasoning on top of that. And then I ate homemade ice cream because in order to get my ketones up high enough to where I actually feel better, like this morning, I'm actually beginning to feel a little bit better. My ketones are higher. My brain is a little bit better and my pain level has dropped just a wow. much. So I ate, but also fun fact, I'm dairy free. So tell me what's in, uh, what's the main ingredient in your carnivore ice cream or so, your not carnivore ice cream, your dairy free ice cream. Yes. In my, in my keto dairy free ice cream, coconut milk and eggs. And I put the egg whites in there as well for the base. I put the egg whites, I put the egg yolks and then coconut milk. I put that in there to really try to ramp up my fat and I could only eat so much of it yesterday. I got like, my body was like, Oh, and we are done now. We are absolutely done. I have tried the suet, the frozen suet. And yeah. if it's really hard frozen, I can, I, I can handle it. But my biggest problem is I'm missing three molars on the bottom. Mm. So it makes it kind of hard to eat <laughs> frozen things. So I'm constantly going nin, 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 at the front of my mouth. And then by that point in time, it's not frozen anymore. Um, what, can you guys what? see this? Oh yes. This? Oh yeah. So this is what she ate yesterday. This was the percentage fat. And for me, that is huge because I am a chronic under eater. So the fact that I got 2000 calories in yesterday was kind of amazing. And I didn't eat an avocado because the store has them, but they are rocks. Mm. So I didn't eat a rock. I was okay with that. Um, to this day, I still struggle with making myself eat things that are not meat. I still struggle. I still think I just want to eat meat. I don't want to have to eat coconut cream, ice cream. I don't want to have to put MCT oil in my coffee. I'm going to keep my coffee though. I do love my coffee, but I still struggle to this day because I still believe that meat is the ultimate path to healing and my body is not playing nice. And so I have to, I have to love myself where I am. I have to meet my body where it is. And I am praying and hoping that one of these days it will be enough that I will have healed enough using all of these extra fats and ketones and things like that to where my body will be able to function on meat and eggs and butter and nothing else. And so that is like my goal is to get there. Bye, Sophia. Bye, Sophia. I love you. Um, yeah. And what I really, really love, um, cause I have obviously watched your interview with, uh, Dr. Boz and I've, you know, been diving in to that. Um, what I love is how simple it is in that it doesn't matter what you're fighting. It doesn't matter if it's cancer. It doesn't matter if it's Lyme's disease. It doesn't matter what the label is. The treatment is still the same. When she it's, said that, oh, I just, I, I completely agree. And at first I was like, wait, really? Really? How freeing is that? We don't have to take all of these tests. We don't have to get this. Yes, the supplements are amazing. But if your body is not in the right state of healing, it doesn't matter what you throw at it. It's not able to assimilate it. It's not able to absorb it and to properly use it. You have to be in the right state. And we have no idea how sick we really are. Amy, I've been eating this way for three years. The fact that I have adrenal fatigue, the fact that I have such low estrogen, the fact that anything is still wrong with me, number one, makes me mad. But number two, I'm so thankful because I really don't think I would be alive. I really don't think that if I hadn't had that severe mental illness that was the catalyst to force me to break my addiction to sugar and carbs and processed food, I wouldn't be here today. And so I'm thankful. I'm thankful that, that whoever 
that was at Arby's that put that bread on your burger. I am so thankful. I am so thankful for that person that messed up that you caught that caused you to be on this journey, to have that moment to where the sheriff came and took you away because I'm so grateful to have you here now and have you in this space now and that we're, we are still getting to heal. And Amy, look at where we're at as far as uh, we're functioning, that we're thankfully not in the psych ward. That's amazing. But just imagine where we can go when we actually heal everything in our mitochondria are functioning on the proper level. It's going to be incredible. And one of the things that I like to point out to people is even if your diet only takes you 20% of the way, isn't 20% still better? Because mine got me, I'm going to be real, like 92% of the way. And I'm 92% better than I was. And that is worth staying low carb. That is worth staying on whatever is working for me, even if it's not what I think it should be. And the judgment that I get, because my name is carnivore's angel. People come at me all the time and say, you're not a carnivore if you're eating spices. You're not a carnivore if you're doing that. Eating coconut cream. Right? I'm like, you have no idea what I am. I'm like, by the way, it's apostrophe S. I'm the angel in the equation, not the carnivore. So thank you for that. (laughs) But the idea that if you just listen to me, it'll work better if you do it my way is very arrogant of a lot of people in this space because they don't know us. I don't even know myself and my body rebelled and it turned on me when I did the right thing. And without my husband to tell me, knock it off, (laughs) I don't know what would have happened. I was down to 500 calories a day and I wasn't even eating my food anymore. I was cutting it up into little chunks and swallowing it with water. Mm. I I wouldn't even chew it because I could get more down that way. If I took my meat and my organs like pills, Mm. than if I were to chew it, my body wouldn't let me swallow chewing, but pills I could do. So 500 calories a day of chopped up little bits of steak that I was downing with probably a gallon of water, honestly, because that's how much it took me to get it down. And I thought I truly believed that that was better. And I was deceiving myself and trying to put myself into a box. I am not a square. I don't fit in a box and I'm okay with that. So I'm so grateful for my husband for every time that he has said, you got to knock it off because you're not listening to your own advice which is Um, a side note, like, let's just shout out real quick, Richard, like, thank God for Richard. Number one, he put up with your crazy, crazy craziness. And number two, I have all along the way heard many, many things that he has spoke into your life. And, um, and I, I know that there's many people on this journey without a supportive spouse, but God bless you with one. And I am, and me too. And I'm so grateful for that. But, um, you know, I, I think that that really is important to have people around you who are going to be supportive. And if you don't have that at your home, um, find your, find your tribe, find your community. Um, Amy, can you tell us what it is that you do and you offer in Mighty Networks? Yes. So I have a YouTube channel where you can go get recipes. Um, you can see the kids, you can see the farm, you can see me. Um, I get on my soapbox a little bit, I'm just saying on my, uh, on my YouTube channel. And then I decided to start up a mighty network. There was a whole series of events that led up to it. I was going to wait for years before I started up a mighty network. Mighty network is like social media without the media. It's the social part where you get together with people that are like-minded and that you want to spend time with. If you come into the Mighty Network, it's kind of like a Facebook type thing where you have a main ads without the ads and without any other groups, any other people, any other, anything it's you and the people who've chosen to be in this group. And it is uh, my personal group 
it is anywhere for keto, ketovore, carnivore, super, super strict down to, I'm just dabbling in low carb and I'm trying to figure this out. Anybody is welcome to come in there. There is no dogma. There is no telling people you should do this. Um, I actually squash it very quickly whenever I see that because I have seen and worked with a lot of very, very, very sick people, including some people who keto actually doesn't work for low wow. carb doesn't work for, and their bodies, because the mitochondria cannot actually process the ketones, their bodies begin to catabolize and it was eating their muscle. Wow. But six and a half months in they're positive that keto has to be the way. And their bodies are being eaten alive. So I've worked with everybody. So I will not tell you what you should do. I can say you might want to try this. And I've seen this work. So that is actually a free group for anybody that wants to come and join that. Um, I can give anyone the link. If you reach out to me, I'm on Instagram, amy.carnivoresangel. I'm on my YouTube channel. You can email me at carnivoresangel at gmail.com no apostrophe, just an S. Um, and I can get that out for anybody. I have a private Facebook group as well. Um, it's just, again, some place for people to come and hang out and be with like-minded people. Um, I also do, I am a certified keto and carnivore coach. So I do coaching on the nutrition part of things. If you need mental support, uplifting, getting your mindset, right. That would be Emily. Because she, she helps me get my mindset right still sometimes. Oh my gosh. Oh, um, I, you know, I, I, um, I do join sometimes in your meetings. Um, and, uh, I gotta tell you, there's a feeling, um, I it's, I it's visceral. I can't, like, I can't even describe it. Um, I feel safe. I just, I feel I feel comfortable. I feel welcome. I feel like no matter what I say, no matter what I'm on in my journey, that I'm going to be welcomed with open arms. And that is such a beautiful feeling because I, I don't really know if I should include, you know, coconut milk or if I should include this or, or how I navigate. And so to know that no matter who I am and where I'm at, that I am safe and that I am welcomed, um, it's everything to me. So thank you so much for, for that community. Absolutely. I do my very best to make people act like humans and not like animals. Yes. Um, and, and we are all, none of us know doctors don't know. Um, scientists don't know. None of us really know what is going on. Um, dad or uh, Larry, sorry. <laughs> uh, my father put um, uh, Amy's uh, uh, link to her Instagram in the chat. So any of you guys want to, to look at that and find her. Um, and uh, you uh, have meetings as well. Um, how often are those meetings? So uh, for the free group, if you're in just for the community part of it, we do one Zoom meeting a month that is included with the free group. It's usually the third Thursday of the month, uh, six o'clock PM central time. If you're a part of the VIPs, that's $30 a month. Then that comes with four Zoom calls a week, four lives a week on it's uh, Mondays and Thursdays at 12 and six central as well. And that we talk about all kinds of topics. We will go over the science of things. Um, I presented a whole thing that I Thomas Delauard <laughs> and then brought back to everybody on leptin and ghrelin and why sometimes you can't listen to your hunger hormones or we talk about portion sizes or we talk about so many other things. Um, and then we have check-ins beginning and end of the month, goal setting, community support all the time. I mean, we've got people on the other side of the world. So there's always somebody active in the group on the app and they're always interacting together. Um, we also have special guest speakers that come in. We've had Dr. Rimka, um, Sally K. Norton. We have had Emily 
And uh, we're going to have more people that come in uh, once or twice a month. And then we also do a bonus documentary viewing in the middle of the month. We don't record that one, but we all watch the documentary together and then discuss it afterwards. Wow. Um, Talk yeah. about having your tribe. Like you get to go watch a movie together. Like that's so fun. Right. And we'll eat, you know, pork rinds or something like that. For the <laughs> there, there we go. There we go. Well, um, Amy, thank you so much, um, for, um, just being on this journey with me, with being, being my friend, um, with, uh, having your, your YouTube channel, um, you really give hope so many people. Um, and, uh, I would say, especially moms to know that there are options to, um, ramen noodles. There are options to, Cheetos to Oreos, to cinnamon rolls, to pizza, there is a way to make it so that you're not inflaming your children's brain. Um, and it is a process, you know, it's not, uh, it's not perfect. Um, but it is doable. Very much so. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's so crazy to understand the physiology behind carbs, insulin, and your brain. And, um, Dr. Boz goes into that a little bit in the video that is up on my channel. We barely scratched the surface of what happens. And she talks about how, um, you know, how a lot of times we think, or we listen to, um, oh, well, if your hair is falling out, you need carbs. If you're depressed, you need carbs. I, I tried it. It didn't go well. And now I understand why <clears throat> she said that when you have an actual brain injury, it basically lives PTSD. When you begin flooding it with insulin again, come to find out depression is an actual brain injury, ADHD is an actual injury. It doesn't have to be from an accident. It doesn't have to be from some kind of horrible infection. It can be itself too full of insulin and the brain begins to die off because of that high insulin. When that happens, you have an injury. And when you bring the carbs back in, even if they're super healthy, organic, you know, the low sugar fruits and honey, because, you know, honey is a big thing because it's technically carnivore, it's bee vomit. So it's acceptable. It raises your insulin and it attacks your brain. And she said, you can actually see it on the scans that the brain begins to shrink in those areas that have finally begun to open up. And that is why for some people, no, you can't go back to the carbs. You can't go back. I tried it for five days. And again, my darling husband walked out and he said, what's for dinner? And I began bawling. And I said, I am a failure at life because I don't know what's for dinner. And he said, and we're done. <laughs> we're done. He took the fruit and he threw it away. He took the yogurt. He put it in the trash can. He took the honey. I don't know what he did with the honey. I think he might've given it to the chickens actually. <laughs> I'm not sure. He was like, and we're done. He goes, okay, that was a successful trial. We now know the answer to that. And I said, I will go bald before I ever go back to carbs. If my hair is going to keep falling out, then my hair is going to keep falling out. And that is perfectly fine because I am not willing to lose my mind. Yep. And you know, let's just change that narrative. Let's embrace the bald. I have, uh, I, you can't really tell cause I already had so much, but I have lost so much hair. Um, and the hair loss was really scary for me. And I made me think I'm doing something wrong. Um, but also I have to look at what my body is doing to fight. And it makes sense that if my body is triaging and it is sending all the nutrients it needs to the problem, to the underlying chronic infection, hair growth is not essential for life. It doesn't matter if I'm bald, if I'm not, if my, my inner body is not functioning the way that it's supposed to function. So my body is really smart. My body is going, Oh, you know what? Hair doesn't matter. 
but this, this organ function or this, this chronic infection that we need to address is. And so I would love to just, you know, share with anyone who's going through hair loss, um, that it, it doesn't matter. I know it's embarrassing. I know it's a social thing, but the fact that your body is, is triaging and sending those nutrients to the right places is what really matters. Your body actually is working with you, not against you. Oh, oh my gosh. I love that. That was a wisdom nugget. We call those wisdom nuggets. And sometimes you say them and you're like, I didn't even know that before I said it, but it completely makes sense now. And I understand. Wow. That was fantastic. Good hair doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. It pancreases, doesn't. pancreases are important. Thyroids, those are also important. Um, Galaxy A13 5G. Go ahead. Do you have a question? Go ahead. Just uh, get off mute. Oh, there you go. Yes, I'm off mute. Hello, everybody. Yeah, my question was, um, so what do you feed your kids, Amy? Okay, so for my whole family, everything is always meat and egg based. Um, the, of every single meal, we always say protein first. So that's going to be eggs, chicken, ground beef turned into burger patties or taco meat, or um, sometimes we'll do broiled ground beef. Um, we do, and there's some people that say no chicken because it's too inflammatory. Well, my body handles it just fine. We do fish, shrimp, honestly, anything that had a face. I'm not real big on oysters, so I don't consider those part of my diet. And then on top of that, the kids are allowed to have cheese as a topping, never as a main meal, because it's got cheese is actually more addictive than gluten in the brain. Um, So we try to limit the cheese. And then on top of that, they may have vegetables if they choose, but the protein is always first. It's always the foundation. Then we move to the cheese. Then we'll do the veggies. And then once or twice a day, they are allowed to have berries or fruit or nuts. Uh, We've tried the almond flour things. That is one of the reasons that one of them is having severe issues right now. Um, And so every kid is different. I've got one that could eat almond flour, everything and be perfectly fine. Her attitude does not change. She is, she can handle all the fruit, all the everything. I've got another one who we know the limits of how far up we can go. It's only five strawberries. It's not six. And then with the nuts, it only has to be one of her handfuls of nuts and not one of my handfuls of nuts. Then for the other one, and it's, it's tough because he watches his sisters eating these other things. And so I've had conversations with him about the fact that, you know what, bud, I got it worse than you do, but isn't it better to not be so angry that you're shaking and crying and then getting in trouble? Because when it comes down to it, you can still have Lily's chocolate chips. They seem to be fine with those. We also avoid artificial colors like the plague um, in their toothpaste in their mouthwash, in their bubble bath, in the sunscreen, in anything. Hand soaps, like Dawn dish soap has three different kinds of artificial dyes in it. Wow. Those affect my kids. Sharpies. Sharpies have artificial dyes in them. So writing on their skin with Sharpies is a big fat no-no. Red makes them extremely aggressive. Yellow makes them defiant. Green makes them manic. And blue makes them mopey. And yellow lasts for five days, Red lasts for three, green lasts for about 24 hours, and blue is anywhere from six to like 18 hours. Wow. And so those honestly affect my kids more than almost anything else. One of the kids, she can have seed oils, you know, in regular mayonnaise, doesn't do a thing to her. The other one, if he gets seed oils, we have like DEFCON 5 right there. I mean, it is, it's it's so individualized for every child. So we'll do pepperoni. We'll do deli meats, um, fairly clean deli meats. It's not, always, I got a big family, so I can't buy everybody the best Hebrew national hot dogs. I like beef water and 2% or less of crap. And that's the way that I look at my kids' food. Um, for me, I can't even handle the 2%. 
So I, I will buy the better stuff for me. Um, hot dogs, we will do, they can do tomato sauce. So like if we were to make a chili, we can put a can of tomato sauce in there. We absolutely don't do beans whatsoever. Um, cheese cubes, we will do uh, pork rinds and butter, tons and tons and tons of taco meat. I will make um, egg white tortilla wraps with egg whites and gelatin, and they'll wrap those around everything. We'll turn those into chips, tons of steak. Honestly, my kids eat a lot of like chuck steak. I'll make roasts and they will eat those. You just have to learn how to make the gravies safe. Um, some carrots for some kids, like a little bit. So then they can eat those with the roasts. Um, I'm trying to think tons of eggs, eggs and always hard boiled, hard over, um, dry scrambled apparently is a new invention of my children. Like they're brown and almost crunchy. <laughs> they scramble them. They're, they're so dry. We've got runny. We've got so many different things. So hopefully that gives you a few ideas of what kids can eat on keto. Yes. Thank you. That's awesome. Good question, Angela. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, um, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, Amy, thank you so much. Um, we did not even plan this, um, but I am so grateful. This was just, um, a divine appointment, um, and perfect timing. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I really want to encourage everybody that, um, even if meat and animal fat, isn't healing you, um, it doesn't mean that's the end of your story, that there is other options. Um, Jackie, you wanted to add something? I just wanted to say, see you in a week, Amy, a week from today. I know. I'm so excited. It's going to be awesome. Anyone can come and join. I'll be your friend. (laughs) I'm so glad. Yes. That uh, meetup is Chicago land. Um, and you can, uh, find, uh, the links to that on is uh, Jackie, is that on your, um, Instagram? It's on am... um, Karen miles, Instagram. Okay. So if, Karen... if you know who Karen miles is, but it's on mine too. Um, I, I have a, a, what do you call it? A highlight about Chicago land, but all you have to do is PM Karen miles. Yeah. And I know that she's closed the ticketing, but I know that she might let people in. I mean, if you really want to go message Karen, yeah. So that's yeah. Karen S miles three. So it's yeah. at There's Karen a dot S miles. Between those. Oh, so Karen dot S dot miles dot three. You're right. Yeah. You're right. That is right. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. And I hope you have a wonderful Saturday and I cannot wait to see you again next Saturday. Have a good one. Bye. Guys. Bye. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the group. Um, there is always, uh, so much beauty in being transparent and in really recognizing that we're all not alone on this journey. Um, and so if you want to feel free to join the Saturday, um, support groups, um, they're every Saturday at 11 AM central standard time. And if you need more individualized care, um, then reach out to me and email me at inner clarity system at gmail.com. And I would love to walk through and show you what it looks like to work with me one-on-one. All right.